YB Nancy, thank you so much for making time to join us on Nyaga Spotlight. Happy International Women's Day to you. Likewise, enjoy it. Thank you, Yangbar Hormat. If I could start off, Yangbar Hormat, by asking you, um, so let's go into the theme for IWD 2024. Uh, let's focus on what does Malaysia have to gain from economically empowering women? Well, uh, Malaysia stands uh, to gain significantly from the economic empowerment of women. And uh, empowering women economically leads to more robust and also sustainable economic growth. So th this will help also improve family and community health and uh, the fostering of a more inclusive and equitable society. Well, women constituting half of the country's talent pool, pool bring diverse perspectives and skills to the workforce, enhancing creativity, innovation, and decision-making processes. Uh, that's um, that's uh, very much into uh, the actual um, people that we describe as women. So the agency to ensure women have economic agency stems from various global and local challenges. Climate change, for example, advancements in artificial intelligence, and the setbacks caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have um, disproportionately affected women, highlighting the need for accelerated investment in their economic empowerment. Addressing these issues requires inclusive policies that recognize and mitigate the unique impacts on women, ensuring they are not left behind as we navigate these global challenges. So this is more for those uh, who are into economic, economic, economic activity globally, um, but we also have those who are in the rural areas, the small scale people, whom we also um, provide assistance so that they can mm -hmm. also stand on their own, especially after the COVID-19. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much for highlighting that, Yang Bahormat. And also, it's very interesting that the latest World Bank statistics, they're actually showing us that an average 20% average increase in any country's GDP if all gender employment gaps are closed and women are then, of course, fully economically empowered. So uh, perhaps we can go a little deeper now, Yang Bahormat, and I'd like to ask you about progress that Malaysia is making when it comes to economic empowerment, especially looking at uh, the Madani government's immediate priorities for increasing female uh, labor force participation rate. Yeah, first of all, you're mentioning about the 20% in the, economy, uh, in the um, contribution by the women. Actually, that's very true. And wherever you go, women have been uh, very much involved in economy, especially with their own, uh, with those doing crafts as well. Apart from uh, the other, uh, the other kind of economy, uh, that they are very much directed, uh, directly involved with their own hands. You know, uh, those who are doing cooking, baking, and also, you know, these are all very good caterers, and also the craft works, especially when it comes to uh, during uh, the uh, COVID time. But they, but they, but they, all the craft works. So they really contribute a lot. But well, going back to your question, Malaysia's current female labor force participation rate um, stands at 56.2%, which is among the lowest when compared to other upper middle income countries like Brazil, South, America, South Africa, and Thailand. This is primarily due to unpaid care duties that keep many women out of the workforce. Despite a higher number of female graduates, uh, the workforce sees lesser female participation. Um, when we look, we look into this scenario, it, uh, this scenario really underscores the need for increasing women's labor force participation to 60% as targeted by the Madani economy framework. And I'd like to um, um, clarify this uh, or to qualify 60% targeted is not the... Uh, target by my ministry because many people might think that it is only something that we need to target on our own but it has to work across the board you know the eco ecosystem has to work 
throughout all the other ministries as well and other agencies to help contribute to the 60% that uh, Madani economy have set up. And at the same time, it's not just for this year or two years, this is for 10 years. So uh, in response to the fact that over 60% of women were not working in 2022 due to household and uh, family responsibilities, our ministry has focused on promoting work from home and entrepreneurship as viable options for women to engage economically while managing their family duties. To support this initiative, we have introduced several programs and agencies aimed at creating a supportive programs, a supportive business environment for women, including Wanita Bankit, my Kasi Capital by YKN. This is a small thing, maybe, because we're giving about 500 ringgit for uh, each for a woman, especially when they can't afford to go out. They don't have li- have license for them to do business. But we know a lot of the, our women are very talented out there, and they want to they want to contribute to the economy through their own skills. Some of them they're good in. Um, uh, in uh, tailoring, some are good in cooking, baking, and uh, doing, and when we say baking, it's not just ordinary baking. They really do a lot of um, creative work in their business. So we give them five hundred ringgit for them to start off their business. We also have other programs in terms of training and capacity uh, development programs by our uh, women development um, uh, department. And the Mama Care uh, program by LPPKN, actually Mama Care program is a very potential um, program for our women and also for the country to earn more from that because a lot of people are looking into um, people who are able to assist to look in to look after postnatal um, um, programs, especially those who have just given birth, and then uh, they they will they make use of their traditional medicine for them to um, provide the service. So this is also another very, very potential area in terms of economy. And also, even though we are providing um, welfare to our welfare recipients, but there are recipients who do not want to become, to, to stay on as welfare recipients for so many years. So they want to stop after a certain time. So we have a program called TUYEP. TUYEP means two years exit program. So they want to exit as recipients, and we give them 2,700 as the capital. But I know what is 2,700, but at least uh, for now, we can help them with 2,007, but we hope that we can be allowed to give more of at least 5,000 because we are not a ministry in charge of um, you know, business. Uh, That's right. Business exactly. Yeah, and, uh, enterprise. Is the heart. If I can- Waibi Nancy, if I can interject there now, as you've been saying, KPWKM has been providing plenty of assistance, plenty of options for women's entrepreneurship. But let's now talk about and go back to something you'd referenced earlier. One of the main foundational structures would, of course, be a proper framework for Malaysia to have a care economy slash industry, because that is ultimately what will allow women to completely go towards the labor market um, on their own terms and also close the gender employment gaps. Um, in your opinion, YB, um, what does the process of establishing this care industry entail and who should be the main stakeholders involved, supporting and also leading the way together with KPWKM? Uh, yeah, I've been talking about it for a long time uh, because uh, actually it's very much my own personal experience which I I, um, re- I, I bring it to the, uh, the, 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 the the ministry for me to introduce something that we can help the people, especially young children, family members who are disabled, and also our, our uh, elderly people. So the establishment of the care industry is crucial for economically empowering women. This sector not only provides employment opportunities for women, but also addresses the challenges of aging populations and the need for quality care for children, the elderly as well as the disabled. Developing this sector involves a very comprehensive approach, including policy reforms, investment in care services, and training for care providers. So our ministry cannot do it alone. 
we need other ministries, government agencies, private sectors. Uh, we, we need to have strategic partners with NGOs. And uh, currently, um, also the community leaders. So on our part, our ministry is currently working on training care workers through JKM, our Department of Social Welfare, and the Malaysia Social Institute, or ISM. The aim is to increase the number of skilled care workers and talents to support the market demand and improve minimum wages. So this is our our intention and our plan with the hope that you know uh, this industry will be able to boost the economy of the country. Of course, there are people who are asking me, if you train the people, other countries will take them. No problem. We want to train our people, let them be skillful, and then let them be earning more. So there's no problem with that. I'm sure when people saw these people who are already successful, they will also um, embark into what we are introducing um, for for our, um, especially for the women. Um, some maybe for the men who want to work in the, the same uh, the same sectors. So it's important to have sustainability for the industry, especially considering the fact that um, Wilson Department of Statistics, they did release their latest uh, pay gap, just showing that Malaysian women, Malaysian men, uh, there's a basically a 33% or so gender wage gap. But moving along from there, uh, Yangbar Hormat, uh, Wabi Nancy, I really want to ask you about this. Is there a way to ensure that economic policies roll out evenly across Malaysia so that no states are left behind? Um, for example, at present, both uh, Sabah and Sarawak um, have not yet mandated the revolutionary first step, seven days of paternity leave. Yeah, well, um, as we all know, Sarawak Sabah, they have their own uh, labour ordinance. And I believe right. Sarawak Sabah would like to also um, um, standardise the, uh, the provisions of the labour ordinance, um, trying to follow, because I, I, I can see that um, in West Malaysia, we have a very good uh, good amendments to the law, and then um, Sarawak is willing to follow suit, as far as I know, um, but they are still waiting for a certain... Uh, because we have from my own reading and from our meeting with our premier, we can see the premier is uh, can see he can see that what we have in um, in the federal side is very good, and we hope to also emulate them. But we know that we have the um, MA sixty three that is that is also there to for them to comply with. With which I hope um, that will there will be some amendments that they come so, uh, with soon because they also want to uh, to. Be fair with the Sarawak um, labourers who are who are under the labour ordinance, the Sarawak labour ordinance. They want to make sure that they will also get, they will also benefit the best out of it. So uh, I believe they will be coming. Up. This will be coming up soon. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And of course, Sabah Sarawak don't do too badly when looking at national averages. They have a a uh, representative of 50% in Sabah, 52% in Sarawak when it comes to female LFPR. But at the same time, like you had mentioned earlier, YB, it's not equal across the country. Um, Trunganu, for example, has only a 44% female LFPR. Uh, Putrajaya, about 73%. So we are a very diverse yeah. country. And hopefully, I think yeah. moving forwards from IWD 2024, investing in women um, really will be something that we can take into consideration even for the upcoming budget for next year. Uh, YB Nancy, Definitely. may I ask we end with your message to uh, Malaysian women and, of course, to Malaysia on the occasion of IWD 2024? Well, I just like to wish everyone a very happy um, International Women's Day. Be with us on the eighth of March this year. Um, yeah, coming soon. Next on Friday. So uh, let us all make sure that we try to wear um, either a touch of red, purple, or lilac like, in support of Women's Day, International Women's Day. So happy International Women's Day to everyone in Malaysia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yangbar Harman.